Hi everyone, welcome back to another UMI tutorial. My name is Ellen Reinhardt and today you will learn more about the site module that is part of the UMI toolkit. After opening Rhino and loading your UMI file, please make sure that the weather file is loaded in your UMI file, plus that all of the buildings have assigned templates. The module that we're going to look at today is the first one. It's called Site, and the Site module allows you to calculate the gross floor area, the site ground area, the floor area ratio, and the maximum building height, all in metric scale. To kickstart the process, you can press the Recalculate button, and UMI will provide you with all of the individual results right away. The gross floor area of this project is set to 8,623 square meters, and the gross floor area is the sum of all of the floors of all buildings on this site. This includes the structural, the functional, and the circulation area of the buildings. The site ground area is the area that you defined in the site boundary layers tab, and that is the sum of all of those closed polylines. And here we have 7,788 square meters. As a reminder, the site boundary objects need to be closed polylines for UMI to be able to detect them and use them to calculate the site ground area. With regards to the floor area ratio, which is also known as FAR, this is the total gross floor area of each building on the site to the site ground area. And for you to get a proper FAR calculation, you need to have set a floor to floor height for every building on the buildings layer. And this also means that all of the buildings must have an assigned building template. Secondly, there also needs to be a site boundary that consists of one or more closed polylines for UMI to be able to calculate the FAR. Lastly, the maximum building height indicates the height of the highest building in your case study neighborhood. And here it's set to 30 meters. At the very bottom of the site tab is the list of individual building templates that you assigned the buildings to. This will also allow you to better understand the gross floor area and the estimated number of occupants for each of the building templates. And you can also change the color of the individual categories if you prefer to have another color palette that is different than the default version you see here. In addition, you can double click the template name in the first column that will select all the buildings that you assigned to that category. And this will also help you if you need to switch from one category to the other, you can select this more easily. Regarding the number of occupants, the total number of occupants per building template reflects the peak occupancy rate for all thermal zones and is greatly overestimated. If you go into the building template editor, you will be able to see the different occupancy densities for the individual templates. So the one for office, the one for residential, and the one for retail. Lastly, it is important to mention that your FAR results are never saved within the UMI bundle and need to be recalculated when you reload your UMI project. That is it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Next time, I will tell you more about the daylighting module.